Erev Tov Kharim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Azaz Assyria, the altar for the pagan war god. That's exactly the title of the broadcast this evening. You know, there's been a lot of talk uh, recently about Aleppo and the battle surrounding Aleppo, which is in uh, pretty much the northwestern side of Syria there. Uh, but Azaz is right there on the border of Turkey. Uh, just north of Aleppo, and it's become a very uh, contested area. It's a contested area with uh, Turkey, with Russia, uh, Syria, everyone you can imagine, even the Kurds. The Kurds are fighting now to take Azaz, and of course this is where the shelling's been going on across the border from Turkey, uh, trying to stop the Turkish, uh, or excuse me, the Kurds from taking it from uh, the the well-backed and well-armed supported Turkish ISIS militants and rebel forces there that the U.S. backs. But I really got to looking into this scripturally as well because of Azaz being uh, uh, such an interesting strategic place, things that are happening there, very interesting. So I looked at it biblically, wanting to get a better idea of what was going on, and uh, that's what really began to surprise me, and that is we find out that Azaz uh, is a... Uh, well, let's go into the broadcast. Let me share with you more as we go here so I can kind of stay on track here. Uh, let's first take a look at uh, Turkey wants to secure uh, a secure line created uh, 10 kilometers inside Syria, including Azaz, says the deputy prime minister. Uh, this is on RT.com, just came out here uh, today. It says Turkey wants to create a secure zone 10 kilometers within Syria, which would include the town of Azaz. Deputy Prime Minister Yalakin Akdogan stated as cited by Reuters. The move comes after Ankara's shelling of Syrian Kurds for four successive days. Uh, what we want is to create a secure strip, including Azaz, 10 kilometers deep inside Syria, and this zone should be free from clashes, Agdogan said in an uh, interview on Turkey's uh, Ahaber television station. Uh, Reuters reported this particular uh, this comments here. It's kind of funny, though, that the Turkish government is wanting to reach inside another country and take 10 kilometers. But then again, that's exactly what Israel has done in the past as well with Lebanon, putting in a secure border. But Israel generally has a lot more uh, good intentions for themselves because they are definitely surrounded by enemies wanting to annihilate them and one of the reasons why they uh, create safe buffer zones. Uh, but now they've given that back to Lebanon. But Turkey, on the other hand, has no good intentions at all. They're using it as a supply line in order to be able to beef up ISIS forces as well as the uh, moderate rebel forces, as they're called by the United States, and keep everything going and flowing smoothly. And Azaz is one of those cities where this is all done. But the United States, excuse me, the Russian... Uh, military, along with the uh, the Kurdish fighters and the Syrian army, have been making it totally a different scene altogether. They have been gaining ground against uh, the ISIS militants and the rebel forces in this little city called Vazaz, and this may be a very contentious area, so much so that it could escalate into a major battle between all the parties that are involved there. Let's look at it though from the biblical perspective. And when I say biblical, we have to go to Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls, to get a better idea about this. But I looked at this a little deeper because I knew that uh, the, the, there was a biblical side to Azaz, or Azaz, Azazel is where we know of him written in the, uh, the book of Enoch. That's the angel, the watchman, the angel, or one of the watchers as it, uh, Enoch refers to them that led the, uh, the, the coming down uh, on Mount Hermon to be able to take over uh, or, to, or to come into it, to cohabitate with the human race there. Uh, but anyway, this is something that was interesting. Now, this is not in the Book of Enoch, but this quotation here, as you see photographed on the screen, is the Dead Sea Scrolls, the name of Azazel, which is the uh, compound Hebrew word of Azaz, the city of Azaz, and of course, the El being God, Azaz El, uh, Azaz El uh, occurs in the line six of 4Q203, the Book of the Giants, which is part of the Enonic literature found at Qumran. 
according to the book of Enoch, which brings Azazel into connection with the biblical story of the fall of the angels located on Mount Hermon, a gathering place of demons of old. Um, now, uh, Azazel is represented in the book of Enoch as one of the leaders of the rebellious watchers in the time preceding the flood. He taught men, watch this now, he taught men the art of warfare of making swords, knives, shields, and coats of mail. You think he's changed any at all in all this time? You know, now he was made bound and put in the rocks and to live in darkness for the rest of his days until the day of judgment. But it just kind of makes me wonder about this particular city in Syria. In fact, it's not too far from Mount Hermon. Uh, at least the Mount Hermon that we call Mount Hermon in northern Israel. But could Azaz actually be where this really took place? It's questionable as far as that goes, but uh, nonetheless, the very name that it's given, and it is an ancient biblical city there, Azaz, you just cannot help but wonder the connection between Azaz and Azazel, that fallen angel who taught the children of men to make war, uh, war items. Moving right along, though, uh, this was uh, produced on uh, the Arab Weekly on January 15, 2016. And the reason I want to bring some of these things out is because of Azaz to show you how interesting that everything is focusing right now around that little city. And of course, as I said, being mentioned in the book of Enoch, Azazel, uh, the fallen angel that taught these things of war and how to make all these uh, instruments of war. And yet here we are at the city of Azaz, and it is becoming a strategic battle point in the war here in uh, Syria. In fact, some cases it's believed that this may be the turning point. Whoever ends up with this city may be considered the winner of the war in Syria. So Russia is gearing up for it, as well as Turkey, the United States, and all the rest of them. Let's take a look at some of the things written in the news here to kind of back up what I'm sh uh, sharing with you. Uh, the Arab Weekly, uh, Syria, the looming battle of the Azaz Corridor. Uh, Beirut, North Syria, has become a key battleground in several conflicts within the civil war, now approaching the sixth year and the uh, epicenter and increasingly a strategic strip of land known as, as, as the, excuse me, known as the Azaz Corridor. Whoever controls this narrow belt of land west of the Euphrates that runs south from the Turkish border to the embattled city of Aleppo, where rebels hold the eastern sector, should be able to dictate how the multi-sided Syrian conflict will unfold. It could also trigger uh, the entry of Turkey into the war, further widening the conflict at a time when major international diplomatic efforts is underway to, con uh, to convene peace talks between the beleaguered regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad and rebel forces. What happens in the Azaz Corridor may determine who will win Aleppo. And this, thus, the war, observed Aaron Lund of the Car uh, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and editor of its Syria in Crisis reports. So as I say, it's become a very interesting battleground period. And of course, as we see what the scripture shows from the book of Enoch, discovered in Qumran, and the book of Giants as well where Azazel is mentioned there. Also, we have on, uh, on Reuters, Russia says Turkey supplies Islamic State via Syrian town of Azaz. Uh, Moscow, February 16th, Reuters reports, Turkey has vowed it will not let the Syrian town of Azaz fall into the hands of the Kurdish forces because it lies on a supply route used by Ankara to support Islamic State, Russian Foreign Ministry said on Tuesday. Turkey accused Russia on Monday of an obvious war crime after missile attacks in northern Syria killed scores of people and warned the YPG Kurdish militia it would face the harshest reaction if tried to capture Azaz near the Turkish border. Now, they mention here the uh, bombs that fell on, and it was actually two different hospitals there in Azaz that this just recently happened. It has been blamed on Russia. Uh, that the locals have been saying it was Russia. Keep in mind, this is Islamic militants that are claiming this, and the question uh, must be considered, was this really uh, Russia, and is it really a children's hospital? Now, we have some video footage we're going to share with you here momentarily uh, later in the broadcast here that will actually kind of raise the question for me, and that's not to take sides with Russia or 
uh, or Turkey or whoever the case may be, but clearly it does seem to be a little questionable, and I question it as well because recently we discovered evidence uh, uh, that uh, through one of Turkey's own uh, people there that it was never uh, Bashar al-Assad that gassed his own people. In fact, it was ISIS being uh, armed through Turkey. So there does uh, uh, stand a strong chance that it was actually Turkey that bombed these hospitals. That's something that I, I have to just throw in there because of the things that are going on. Continuing on in this article, though, it says, some of our partners have literally implored us not to touch a corridor, which is a bit shorter than 100 kilometers on the Syrian-Turkish border around Azaz. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman uh, Mario uh, Zaharova said in an official comment, mentioning Washington and its allies also operating in Syria. And, of course, he's speaking when he says partners, uh, it's interesting how Russia uses these terms of wars. Russia really has seemed to work very diligently trying to maintain a, some normalcy uh, uh, as far as their relation with the United States, although they are strained uh, at the moment with, between Ukraine and the Syrian conflict as well. Continues on in the article, though. Obviously, this is aimed at ensuring continued daily supplies to the Islamic State. Jabhat al-Nursa and other terrorist groups with weapons, ammunition, food from Turkey via this area, and also to allow it to serve as a passageway for terrorists, she said. Earlier on Tuesday, the Kremlin strongly rejected accusations by Turkey that Russia's bombs hit several medical facilities and schools in northern Syria, saying they were unfounded. Um, Again, I know that Russia uh, is, is claiming they did not do it, and I can't say that Russia did not. It's, there's still that possibility, but uh, in a moment here you'll see some video footage that just kind of raises sus suspicion, to say the least there. Uh, Reuters also reported on February the 17th, that was today, Turkey vows to stop Kurdish militia gaining border foothold. Turkey will not let Kurdish militia fighters backed by the United States establish a foothold on its border in northern Syria and will not stop shelling its security uh, Its uh, security is threatened, President uh, Erdogan said on Wednesday. The Kurdish uh, YPG militia, regarded by Ankara as a hostile insurgent group, has taken advantage in recent weeks of major Syrian ar army offensives around the city of Aleppo, backed by Russian airstrikes to seize ground from Syrian rebels near the Turkish border. Their gains have infuriated Turkey, which has shelled the YPG positions in Syria in response to what it says is fire coming across the border. They have also complicated wider efforts to end the Syrian conflict, um, deepening the divisions between NATO, member Turkey, and the United States, which views the YPG as a useful ally in the fight against ISIL, the Islamic State. You cannot help but wonder, though, if that's not a hypocritical statement, though, on the U.S.'s part there, because uh, it is the United States that helped create ISIS in the first place. And I, I just can't see where the U.S. is playing in on this. Are they going to side with Turkey or the Kurds? It seems more so they're siding with Turkey because they basically are, are not saying anything to Turkey, while Turkey basically genocides the, Turkish, uh, the Kurdish community within its own borders. Uh, not to mention trying to fight with them across the, uh, the Syrian border. If Turkey is really against ISIS, then why aren't they backing the Kurds? Yet they still consider them a terrorist organization. It's really strange things going on here. So anyway, uh, according to the Reuters as well, February 15th, dead, uh, 50 dead as missiles hit a medical center and school in, in the Syrian towns. Uh, this is the video here, I, be, I believe it is. Yes, this is the video. Now, I want you to watch something here, friends. Look at these guys' jackets that are coming here to investigate this bombing right here, uh, to, to, to look for the survivors. Every one of them are like clean, like brand new, like somebody just handed these guys out these jackets and, and gave them to them. They're, they're, and they, they're making sure they're clearly marked on their back that these are the guys coming in to check this out. Uh, and, and it just seems a little bit odd. Uh, anyway, it says about 50 civilians were killed when missiles hit, uh, uh, hit five medical centers and two schools in rebel-held Syrian town on Monday. The United Nations and residents said that the carnage occurred as Russian-backed Syrian troops intensified their push toward the rebel stronghold of Aleppo. Uh, by the way, the man that you see speaking in there now, in the video there, uh, it's kind of funny. They report him as being... Uh, uh, I forget which agency he works for out of London. He does speak perfectly good English and everything. 
But it's just kind of funny. They pick an, an Arabic guy from London, which London is, has a huge, huge Arabic community besides the Syrian refugees that are coming in now. Uh, but he seems to definitely side with uh, the, the, the groups there saying that it was children was killed. And again, this man here on the screen, as you can see, it, it's almost as if his shirt was brand new to start with, but somebody made sure they touched him to kind of dirty it up a little bit because the rest of it looks nice and clean. So it's just, it's just kind of odd is what I, I think when I see this. Um, may, maybe not. I may be seeing things into this a little bit more than should be, but just kind of odd. Uh, another thing that really caught my attention too, especially as we're looking at Azaz, Azaz or Azazel, uh, the, the place where the uh, fallen angels there, the chief there that taught the war and everything, uh, in this city being named Azaz, was uh, another on Crosstalk with Peter Lavelle. He had his host on his show uh, just the other day on February 10th, about a little, well, actually about a week ago now. It was called R Rumors of Wars. And in the article, it starts out, Wars and Rumors of Wars. I just thought it was interesting that they named this, this particular title because truly this is the biblical times that we are living in. We are seeing the wars and rumors of wars, a passage of scripture from Matthew 24 that he quoted there uh, that is certainly being fulfilled as we speak. But watch what he says in his statement here. The Pentagon has requested an unprecedented budget. What threatens the United States and its allies the most? Is Russia one of those threats or is it more failed military interventions? Now we wrote the comment myself from after watching his program there. Uh, I wrote some of the thoughts here. The RT's host and guest all laughed at the idea that the Saudis would send troops to Syria. Every one of the guests were unanimous on that. They kind of laughed it off saying, yes, they'd send, what, 50 soldiers to Syria. And their thought was that if the Saudis cannot even defeat a small country like Yemen that is a very poor country and very uh, ill-equipped, how are they going to defeat uh, a Syrian uh, the, Syrians, uh, the Syrian army, especially backed by Russia uh, with the air power there. But anyway, uh, but they said, but Turkey was considered to be a, wild, uh, a, a really a serious threat is what Turkey is considered to be. And that is something that they're really concerned about. They were unanimous on that too, uh, that if Turkey gets involved in this, it may force the United States. Uh, but the real question was whether or not Obama would send ground troops to lead the way because the... Uh, uh, Ash Carter has not rejected the idea that they may back the Saudis and take them up on their uh, offer to send in a ground force led by the United States. If this happens, this could really send the whole region into a world war. And this is something that has been a war uh, that has been um, uh, very much looked at. The guests were in agreement uh, too that Russia could win the war. Uh, or that, the, that, the, that Russia could possibly win the war if a war did start. And that would definitely, um, they said, it's something that scares Washington. What if Russia could win this war? Uh, looks like Russia's beefing up for that. That's another issue, too. And we can see that in one of the later things here. Russia said, uh, uh, said uh, set to deliver advanced fighter jets to Iran. This was on the Times of Israel uh, reported today as well. So Russia is set to supply several Sukhoi Su-30M multi-role fighter jets as a part of an arms deal between the two countries. A high-ranking official in the Russian Federal Service for the Military Cooperation said on Wednesday. Uh, now, it's kind of interesting when you think about it, and I think what Russia is trying to do is to make sure that they are not hemmed up in one little spot there in Syria, while all these other nations are surrounding Russia uh, and the Syrian military there, and is it going to be Russia fighting all alone against all these nations? Uh, so it looks like Russia is kind of preparing for that. Another interesting thing too that came out as well, and this came out here on uh, uh, this is on the Aviation.com's uh, website. It says on February 15th, uh, just two days ago. The TU-214 registered RA-645-14 serial number goes into that. The second of the two examples of this kind of aircraft built under contract with Russia's Ministry of Defense flew from Kazan to Lat Latkia Air Base in Syria. And uh, they had posted on their website the where you can see, and, and, and we've looked at this many times ourselves, uh, flight, uh, flight radar, 24 where you can track planes many of them will be considered unmarked I, I just did that recently myself but what was interesting though is what the plane was and that's this plane right here a Russian Air Force TU 
214R is about to land at Latkia, Syria, is what the aviation uh, aviationist uh, website said on uh, February 16th. With its ADS-B transponder signal broadcast in the clear and detected by flight uh, radar 24 collecting stations, the aircraft could be tracked as it followed the eastern corridor from Russia to the Caspian Sea and this and then to Syria via the Iranian and Iraqi airspaces. It's not clear whether the aircraft has already been delivered to the Russian Air Force, even though it's quite weird uh, that a developmental aircraft is deployed abroad, unless the reason is testing it at a war in a real scenario. By the way, this plane is equipped with some of the latest technology available, being able to intercept uh, all types of technology, radar, sensitive equipment, uh, you name it. Uh, the guys here on their website there really speak about what the capabilities of this Russian plane uh, has. Uh, and it is uh, still under a testing phase, but they're wondering if Russia is not ready to actually put it into action. If that's the case, it may explain, too, why um, uh, Brother Moshe from uh, uh, the Israel uh, in the news uh, in his YouTube channel there was saying that he was seeing continue, continue supply of Russian uh, 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 supply planes going in overhead of Israel flying into Syria. Uh, no doubt re uh, equipping and getting ready for the long haul, what may be a huge campaign ahead. Uh, all of this together, though, friends, I, I, like I said, we're, we're working on, and I, and I will be getting back to this very soon, on a video about Planet X. And is there, is there a real concern about Planet X? And is, is some of this fighting here besides the oil, is there another reason why there may be a fight for this, uh, this planet uh, that supposedly is going to be coming in? Uh, as we've stated already, we do believe that there may be a, a real significant uh, threat with this Planet X. Uh, I do believe it comes at the, uh, the ending of the, the Ministry of the Two Witnesses as God's judgment. And, of course, all these nations think they can survive this. And there's one thing that's really caught my attention and that is the particular map that is called the after or the New World map, uh, and this is what it's believed to look like after uh, Nibiru or Planet X actually passes uh, the Earth this time around. Uh, it's, it's believed that the Planet X has actually passed the Earth during the time of Moses uh, and also during the time of Noah's time on the Earth, which caused all the different problems on the Earth back then. If you look, though, at this map on your screen now, and I tried to make sure that it would just cover the whole screen for you, and I don't know if my mouse will show up there for you guys or not. Syria, though, is, a, I would say at least half of Syria is completely a safe zone. Uh, this whole area, even a, lot, a large portion of Turkey, uh, all of uh, North uh, East Iraq is all in, in good shape. It's all going to be a, a good area. It's not supposed to be uh, harmed during this time. I've looked at several different maps too, by the way, and in one map also, all of Syria is actually considered a safe zone. Uh, and uh, it's believed that none of it will be underwater during this time. Uh, but this is worst case scenario, I guess, if you're looking at that. And another thing that's interesting as well is that the West Bank, or and even including Jerusalem, will be untouched by uh, the, uh, the actions of the passing of Planet X. But if you go over to uh, Italy, uh, we find out that Rome completely disappears. Now, the mountain chain in the middle of Italy will still be there, but Rome is gone. So this could be another reason why the Pope wants to make sure he gets a hold of Mount Zion, because he needs a new headquarters. A uh, whole lot of things to think about, and I got some thoughts I want to share with you guys. I was looking at another one because of the river Euphrates and the angels that are, that are there uh, holding back those demons that are going to be loosed on the earth. All kinds of thoughts have been coming into my heart, but I'm just not sure, and I don't want to say things and then mislead someone, so I like to really be for sure in my heart before speaking about it, but I just have been wondering about some of these things there as well, and will it play out with uh, the events that are happening uh, with the wars here that we're seeing that are, going to, that, that are, that are mounting up? Uh, no doubt, one thing's for sure, though. The Bible does say that all nations will come against Israel. And, and, and one thing that's going to happen is that this whole issue with Syria is definitely bringing all nations into the battlefield. 
So they will turn eventually on. Um, they will turn uh, on Israel. So Israel does, does need your prayers more than ever. They need your prayers now. And uh, we thank you for your prayers as well. My wife needs your prayers as well. Uh, my daughter, the sickness that she had with, a, with this uh, inner ear infection, uh, so, something to that effect, my wife ended up getting it as well. Very, very sick uh, as well. Um, hopefully we catch it. She's going to the doctor tomorrow. But she's been, same symptoms, same scenario that our Ariella went through as well. So be prayer, praying for her as well. And we thank you and God bless you um, and pray for Israel. Shalom.